All right, so this is the first ever, I guess we decided to call it Captain's Corner. That yeah, works. So I know there's a bunch of podcasts out there that talk about fishing, but well, we're, we're gonna do our own, I guess. And I, I got my good friend Paul here, he's like my brother, also a captain. He runs Boss Hawk Sport Fishing. Um, he's a big part of the reason why I'm out here doing what I'm doing. And um, yeah, without him, a lot of this isn't possible, but uh, we wanted to go over like, like a part two of the first video for Sturgeon. Not, you know, there's not many of us that do this, this kind of sturgeon fishing in salt water. I think it's just us two, mostly, as far as charters. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And a bunch of other, everybody weekend warriors and stuff, but, uh, you know, um, obviously we catch fish, but we want to go over a few things that kind of help you. So you guys see we have some, some leaders out on the table. His style and my style, you know. Um, totally different. Totally different, yeah. I'm, I'm still going for the... But kind of the same deal, right? Same concept. Kind of the same thing, but I'm still going like full Rambo and he's like, well, you're, you know, full finesse and <laughs> he still gets them, so. But um, yeah, you want to tell him what that is there? What it's um, made out of? It's, this is a, it's a five aught, if I'm not mistaken, kale hook. Um, and I've got 200 pound Dacron is what I use. Or uh, I think it's called, what is it, Dynemia or something like that? Yeah. Or, right? Dynemia or Dynemia something like that? Like that yeah. uh, something like that. So yes, it's it's very strong, very, very strong stuff. I never have to retie. Um, I actually use these the entire season and I have them hanging in, you know, hanging in a little spot in my boat and they stay there the entire season through salmon, through everything. Um, and they're still, I mean, you cannot break this stuff at all. Yeah, it's strong. Yeah, you don't have to worry about this stuff going bad at all. I just retie because I like it when it looks nice and clean, right? You got that clean green color or whatever color I may use. Um, but yeah, this stuff is, is very, very strong. It lasts forever. Yeah, it's, I've seen them catch a lot of fish on it, but you guys see what I use. I use all kinds of different colors and different pound tests. Um, I like to keep it fresh and just do different things, you know? All black murder out leaders, you know. This is a 150 pound test. I also have a 200 that I've been playing with, but I'm not gonna really put that out there until I catch a fish on it. It shouldn't last more than, what, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been fighting fish, but uh, gosh. Yeah, you guys look at that. This thing, this is the one that caught the 110 incher. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty heavy duty, but, um, but same thing, you know, same kind of concept. It's actually about the same length too. Yeah, let's see. Most guys go much, much shorter, but yeah, like we're yeah, pretty I'm, close. I'm a little bit, you know, I don't measure them. I just, yeah. I'm tiny, I get the line and just, like I told him, I put the, uh, I hooked myself here, my necklace. I just put it out there and kind of measure it in my chest and tie it, but kind of the same deal. These things, they work really well. Um, this is why I pack on so many of those ghost rooms. He was just saying that right now. I mean, this is a seven or eight odd, and he's got a five, but. Yeah. Um, they both work, you know? I've, I mean, the, difference, the difference is pretty obviously noticeable. That's pretty crazy. I don't think I've ever used anything that small, <laughs> you know? But hey, he gets them though. But uh, but yeah, you know, we just wanted to kind of go over all this stuff. And um, I know I touched some subjects last time, especially the don't be that guy. After I did that, some people slow down, but I still had some people that wanted to be that guy. And uh, I know you've experienced that. Oh you know? gosh, oh yeah. It's horrible. Especially in the South Bay. I mean, we're, we're fishing really small water, so yeah, that's, it's, it's super important to be courteous, right? It's horrible. I mean, we're all trying to fish, we're all trying to catch fish, and yeah. I mean, being courteous and understanding what we're trying to do goes yeah. a long way. It is very frustrating. Um, but uh, when, you're, when you're rigging those up, uh, Let's talk about how many ghost shrimp you put on there or whatever you put on there. <clears throat> um, one. <laughs> <laughs> one ghost shrimp. I'm getting there. Yeah, that's it. I yeah. mean, as you can see, I use a, a small hook for that same reason. The ghost shrimp covers this. You'll never ever see the hook. They won't. They won't. They shouldn't feel it until, you know, until it's too late. Um, and yeah, I just put the one ghost shrimp on there. If I'm doing eel, I'll run the eel through the hook all the way up past the actual eye. I'll have the eel up top. And then I'll run a ghost shrimp, you know, on the hook itself. So you got the eel and the ghost hanging there. And then of course, shit, silly string it. And, yeah. And uh, it's pretty good. But if not, yeah, it's just this one straight ghost shrimp. That's it. Yeah. He also has a special way to, to wrap uh, these herring on there, which we'll show later. Um, I've tried it. You know, I have my, I have my method of, of doing herring. Um, I put a little chunk 
like I said, when I was younger, I got to hang out a little bit with the Kunang brothers, and one of the most important things they told me is always give them just enough to put it in their mouth and swallow it. So the hook. Well, this guy, he he, uh, he overachieved it and put the whole damn thing on there. <laughs> he gets bit on him. I, I can't do it. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just impatient and, you know, I have my ways, but. Um, well, I just, I just figure, you know, honestly, when they're when they're in our area, the time we're trying to fish for them, whether it be late February or early March, I mean, they just came from herring spawns. Yeah. So you know how that goes. Yeah. Um, they're eating these whole fish. They're not chopped up in little sections. Yeah. So I'm just giving them what they've been eating, you know, for, uh, theoretically for the past, you know, month, month and a half, you know? Just natural so, presentation. Just natural. Yeah, just giving it exactly yeah. how it is. So, um, and it's worked. Yeah. It's worked. It's, it's you know, it, it takes a little more patience because when they eat it, when they hit it, I mean, you're not going to set the hook like on a, like on a shrimp, right? I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean this is in their mouth when they're eating a eight, 10 inch herring, right? You got to give them some time to eat it. So yeah, you got to wait, you got to wait, you got to wait till you really feel that weight or you feel that line just going. So it's different. It is different. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's nuts. Uh, yeah. The whole fishing down here, it's, it's been different compared to Martinez and up in the Delta. We've both done that. And I, I grew up doing that up in the Carquinas. Hill Carquinas Pier, my grandfather, my dad, but especially coming from there to down here, it's a different, different ball game. It you is. Know, this guy's always told me, you know, just have some patience, keep doing it, and we'll figure it out. And yeah. my first couple of years, are, I get one or two fish, you know, whatever here and there. And little by little, I started just, to busting them out, you know, I haven't had an epic day like this guy. This guy gets limited sometimes, and <laughs> I'm telling him, like, damn, that one day I've been waiting for it. But you'll have it, you'll have it. It'll, sure. it'll come, you know. I've, yeah. I've definitely put a dent in that population in the past two, three years, you know, especially this this season. I think I've had what two trips the whole season that we have no fish. Yeah, one was bad weather, and the other one I had a crew that just got there a little late and left a little early, so we kind of missed the opportunity. But you know, which we all know with sturgeon, if you can get one fish a day, that's a great day. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, by far the hardest fish in, in our you know fishery to catch so yeah yeah you know, they're that, tough that first trip back from running this new boat on the barbarossa i had four fish before i don't know 9 30 10 o'clock something like yeah. that i had two keepers one oversized and one shaker you know and that was my first trip after what, a year and a half yeah since, since my boat went down yeah welcome um, back <laughs> yeah it's like I was, I was telling him i was like i was worried i was like i don't know if i can if i can find these fish again if i can it's been a year and a half most years. I don't know what they're doing, if they're acting the same. And, and yeah, I didn't miss a step. But uh, you know, it is, it's fun. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of things are different fish in saltwater, you know. Um, oh yeah, well, we're, de we're, de we're dealing with a whole lot more. Yeah, we have, you know? we have the, the, the rays and the sharks to deal with. And um, yeah, one of the things that I didn't really, really talk about in the last one was, which is part of that don't be that guy, is recently I sent him a picture of a guy that pretty much dropped the anchor right where my lines were. Oh gosh, yeah. And if I would have hooked up a fish or one of my customers, would have, one of the customers would have hooked the fish, it would have went right to their anchor line. And that's another thing you guys gotta, gotta do. Let's just say this is my boat and you come up and anchor up like right here. When I cast, our lines are like right at your anchor. So if we hook up, guess what? That fish is gone. But as the tide turns, then same thing. Now it's the opposite, you know, or whatever. Now that boat that decided to anchor close to me, you know, they're gonna have the same problem. Yeah. You know, but uh, I got up in the back of the boat and I said, hey, I got their attention and, and I told them, so you guys wanna move? And he didn't say much, but I said, all right, well, let me let me give him a wake up call. I'll grab my rod and put a sinker on it. And I was gonna just cast kind of near and let him know how close I was. And I think he thought I was gonna cast at his boat. Oh, wow. <laughs> but <laughs> he picked up and moved, so cool. But yeah, just you guys have some respect out there. You know, it's there's plenty of fish out there, and just be courteous because plenty of water too. I mean, just a lot, yeah. Like we noticed that we're on anchor, and there's like 40, 50 feet of you know of waterway to the left of us, and these guys want to come where there's like 10 feet to the right of us. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, but um, you know, it's yeah, it's frustrating. But um, there is times where you want to fish different areas so, you know like this guy's gotten you know out candlestick and stuff like that um coyote coin and like i tell people you know i only go there when i know there's a herring spawn you know in the past years we've i've gone out with him and we hooked that fish right away first thing in the morning it was new year's day i think we got 
two, yeah. three fish. Remember that? Yeah. It's just like oh, yeah. boom, 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 done. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. Yes. Um, <laughs> but we had an epic herring spawn that year. Um, mm -hmm. So like I always say, when, if you're able to go to these areas where there's a big herring spawn, just go. Just anchor up in the middle of it. You know. Um, right now, I think. They're still herring around somewhere because those fish aren't anywhere in the south. They're moving or whatever. But um, that's why I've been kind of doing the halibut, you know. But um, you had one trip and you got a trip right. You got a fish right away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. It's yeah. just it's a lot of it's luck too, obviously, right? I mean, yeah. you could be in the middle of a pile. You know, you're in a pile of fish, and if they don't want to eat, and if it's not time, then they're not going to do it. You know. So yeah. That's the frustrating part about them. But what do you think about like? You know, and I know we talk about this all the time. When I send you pictures, when I see all the fish on the screen, and I'm like, not getting one or two. And I know there's times where you go out and you look for stuff on the screen, but you don't see nothing on there, and you just stop, and then you get fish. Correct. Like, how would you explain that to somebody? Like, you know, is that is that just your gut feeling or experience or, or you know? Honestly, I mean, it's a little a little of both, right? I mean, you got to go with your gut. Um, even on our last trip that we took, you know, my son was like, just quit messing with the fish finder. Just go with your gut. Go go where you know you've caught them before, right? Yeah. Where they're going to be. Um, and that doesn't always pan out, but it's a good place to start, right? You don't, you don't necessarily need the electronics. I mean, they help you. But after you've done it for so long, you kind of find out, you know, you find a little pattern, right? You find exactly what they're doing, yeah. whether it's the incoming tide or on the outgoing tide. Um, but it's important to always pay attention to your area, you know, where you're fishing. Why is it that I'm catching fish here? And why is the guy 40 yards to my right, why isn't he catching fish, you know? So whether it's bait, whether it's, you know, where you're at, I mean, you have to pay attention to all that stuff, you know, and that's what makes a good fisherman is always keeping that mind going, always learning. you know, always yeah. learning exactly. Um, Cause it's different every day. I mean, you know very well how that goes. Yeah. You, know, you can kill the fish one day and go back to the next, and you're like, "Oh, we're gonna kill them today," and then nothing. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's a tough a tough one for sure. You know, it's you, right when you think you got them all figured out, <laughs> they let you know that uh, nope. Yeah, not, they, uh -uh. they jump around you and oh yeah. You, you know, and um, yeah, there's times where I only fish certain spots on on the income. You know. Mm -hmm. I took Matt's out, Christmas life. I took him mm -hmm. to a spot that I normally fish outgoing. But I said, you know what, let's try it out. I took him on the incoming, we, we got one, you know? I tried it again and that was it. I never caught a fish there ever again on the incoming tide. That's it. It's weird. I was like, it was, you know, he got lucky, I don't know. Um, but also the other thing that he does too, when he picks a spot, you turn your, your fish finder off. I do. You know? I do, and that's for a couple of reasons. <laughs> What's that? The main reason is usually you got guys that are like, oh man, look at all those fish. Oh man, look at all them. They're not biting. Why aren't we catching fish? Why? And it just it drives <laughs> you crazy. It, you know, it, it gets to the point where you're just like, okay, time to turn it off. Yeah. But for the most part, it's because of the clicking sound. I try to get rid of that, right? And if you listen to your transducer, they all do. And I didn't know that for a long time that they made that noise, you know, but they do. They have a clicking sound. Click, click, click. Some are a lot, a lot louder than others. Yeah, the ones on, on this boat in Barbarossa, like if it's the music stop or anything and I, I stand back there, it's. Oh, you can it, clearly it hear it. Really irritating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can like, hear mine in my cab. I can actually, yeah, I can like, actually hear it in the cabin. Oh, yeah. It's pretty loud. It's loud. So I like to turn it off, especially because we fish super shallow back there. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, you, you saw last time we were out, I put, took my net, which is like five <laughs> feet, you know, and I put it in the water and it hit. Yeah. So we're in like three feet of water. So you, you definitely want to minimize, you know, sound coming from guys walking on the boat, mm -hmm. stomping on the boat, people Being yelling loud, on the boat. Loud music. Music. Um, you definitely want to try to, you know, obviously keep your chances as, as good as possible. So you definitely want to change as much as possible. Yeah. You know, make sure you're not doing all these crazy loud things or, you know, just and, and try them out because it does work. It does make a big difference. Yeah. You know, these fish aren't, nor they're not used to hearing all these crazy sounds if they're, you know, if they're feeding or whatnot. So, Only yeah. Tupac. Only Tupac. When I fish, you yeah, guys start know, to love them. I play Tupac around. and they, they, they <laughs> hop on the boat. And, you know, those are West Side fish. They're, they're from the town, you know. But, uh, <laughs> That, I don't know, that's just a superstition that I do. I do a lot of weird things. I have, rough. I have to have a Snickers bar when I go out and fish. And there you go. If I don't have one, I feel like I'm not going to catch fish. There you go. I actually had my buddy, uh, I had Joe bring me a damn Snickers bar to the ramp one day because I, I forgot one. <laughs> and we got fish. Um, does it make a difference? No. The other thing we are talking about earlier is bananas. Bananas. What yes. do you feel about bananas? <sighs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, because I've had situations where, yes, we're not catching anything 
and it's always the escape goat, right? That's always what we use. Anybody bring bananas, right? That's always, I yeah. mean, we're not catching fish. We're not, you know, we're not up to par. We're not, you know, doing what they think we should be doing yeah. like nonstop. So I ask that question as usually it's, it's just as a joke, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but hey, I'm gonna run with it when they tell me they do. Yeah, I'm gonna say, what? It's your fault. Oh my God, that's around. why we're not catching any fish. You know, get rid of these things. And they laugh and they're like, oh yeah, whatever, whatever. And I mean, more times than I can even tell you, I mean, it, it, it is almost fish on right after. Yeah, almost it's, it's funny. Like yesterday, I ran out of it and it was nasty weather, but I asked the same question. Cause the day before we were hooking up left and right. Um, and I just asked, anybody bring bananas? And one guy goes, uh, why? <laughs> I said, what do you mean why? Do you have bananas? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I was like, they're bad luck. Get them off the damn boat. <clears throat> he runs and he throws them off. And then I asked anybody else, the other guy, I have bananas and we got rid of all the bananas and instantly we started hooking and pallet it. You know? Bites are coming, they're missing fish, but we got them, you know? And then I found out later that one of the guys had, had banana peppers. I said, get that shit off the boat. Oh, we've we, had we, banana peppers. <laughs> we threw bread. it off and that's when I got the keeper. Oh yeah. You no, know, 130, 145, he, 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 he dumped them and we got the keeper. Yep, a real good buddy so. of ours. You know, you know Scoop obviously, yeah. a real good buddy of ours. Uh, one of the first few trips that he took with me, um, actually his, his now wife, she was with us as well. And we were struggling that day. I don't know what we were fishing. I think we were fishing for stripers <laughs> or halibut again. And I asked him, I said, where's the bananas at? And he was like, no, we didn't bring bananas. Hell no, we wouldn't bring bananas. And his wife kind of looked at him and he knew, he was like, oh, are you serious? So she goes in her bag and she pulls out some bananas and he fires them. She was pissed, right? She wanted her bananas. And she was like, a few minutes later, she was like, hey, anybody want some uh, some trail mix? And of course, the trail <laughs> mix had banana chips inside, right? Yeah. So he took all the trail mix, all the bananas, and he, he fired all the stuff off, right? And then she had some Trader Joe's, I believe they were like dried bananas, almost oh like, you know, what we had. yeah, so it was banana, 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 right? Bananas, yeah. Oh yeah, they were like dry bananas and she said they were like $6 a pack. She was pissed when he threw those overboard too. Of course he opened the package up and threw them all out. But uh, yeah, banana everything. Yeah, so banana, even yellow shirt sometimes, I'm like, hey, take your shirt off or do something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always when they're not, when we're not catching fish, right? What's, uh, I mean, it happens. Yeah. It happens, but. Yeah, we've that's... turned many people into believers about that banana thing for sure. Yeah, which is funny is I go on the, on the boats in San Diego, Shogun and all those boats, and you walk into the boat, and the first thing you see is a whole array of fruit. Yeah. and the biggest thing they have of is bananas. Bananas, of course. And the first time I went to the Shogun, you know, with, with, with Steve with Flash, that first eight-day trip, I, I looked, I walked in there, and I was like, I looked at it, I said, what the hell? And the guy goes, don't worry about it, you'll be eating them tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hell no. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, they, they made, you know, pudding and all kinds of stuff. Oh, and yeah. I, I'm still looking at fish, you know. I love bananas, so it's hard for me to toss them over. Yeah, but yeah. You know, like the ones we tossed yesterday, I was like, man, I should have just kept them. But I'll tell you what, there's sometimes where I do bring a peanut butter and banana sandwich in the boat. And I, I don't tell nobody. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're the captain, so that's all right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's once I right. eat it, it's, it's, it's disposed of, you know. It's um, all right. Yeah, but that's a funny thing. And we've been out there, you know, I, I, matter of fact, I'll never forget it. I was with, uh, we were fishing a Sturgeon Derby, South Bay, of course, Salviso. <laughs> you mean one of those six that you won? Yes, right? <laughs> so, um, my best friend growing up, you know, Craig, he came down and he didn't know, he'd never know, you know, he'd, uh, he never ever heard anything about that banana thing. And uh, he brought six bananas, oh my God. right? And that, he, and he brought the whole bundle of bananas. And that day we ended up with six keepers. So I was like, well, I mean, maybe the banana thing's good luck, right? But of course, when, you, when you're not catching them, it's bad luck. And yeah, in that situation, we all laughed about it and it, it didn't make a difference because it really doesn't. It's just more of, it's like I say, tale. just something to blame, right? It's like an old had, pirate's tale. Yeah, and it is, and it's, and it's, it's a, you can look it up, you can Google it. I mean, it's a real thing. Yeah, um, the banana spiders and the- Yes. All that, the settlers brought bananas over and the, was it poisonous banana spiders? Or yes, they yeah. Killed everybody on the boat. And, yep, because bananas last a long time, right? Yeah. They're one of the things that really don't go bad for a real long time. So, yeah, you're right. They'd go down and they grab a banana and they get, you know, yeah, bit, by, bit a spider by a spider and everybody got sick or whatever and died. Yeah. But, yeah, we don't have to worry about that no more. No. Really. 
But yeah, no, that's funny. There's a lot of things like that. How are you with, with, with handling your bait? Do you let people put their own bait on the hood? No, 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 no. <laughs> you see? I'm not the only one. No, 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 no. Um, Why is that? And even what we just did a few minutes ago, we put lotion on our hands to make sure yeah. we weren't on ashy and stuff. I, we, that will not happen. Hell no. Um, either the, from the day before or, I mean, we wash our hands very, very well. Um, and I make sure that it's just myself pretty much. My son, is, you know, he'll do it as well. Um, but I don't let anybody touch any bait at all whatsoever. I don't let them really, you know, you don't, you don't, you want to try to keep as much off. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm a firm believer that, I mean, I don't have to really add scent to the bait, but the last thing I want to do is really add scent to the bait, you know, mm -hmm. um, whether you're a smoker, you know, whether you lotion, uh, cologne in the morning. I, I like to, I like to put cologne on in the mornings and I try to make, I make sure not to really go overboard with that stuff yeah. also you know um but i'll do you know what you do also you take your stuff and you start rubbing yeah. it all up i'll do the same thing the on there and, yeah 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 you know, we'll do the same you'd thing. be surprised how many times just just you doing something like this just oh yeah just the oils. you get off oh yeah you know and, and if you're trying the sun all day especially if you get sunblock then you're you know you rub your forehead or something and that all comes off yeah uh, one of the things i tell people too is when we move a spot or check baits I tell them not to touch the bait. Mm -hmm. Just grab the leader and not to let the actual actual like bait touch the floor. But what do we do on the floor after we're done touching every time? We we clean them down, we soap them down, we scrub them. You all kinds all of kinds chemicals of and stuff on there. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And, and if it does touch, I, I I take it off and put a whole new whole new array of bait. Um, I don't let them touch the bait at all. You know, I very very picky about that. You know? No. Um, yeah, that's 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 a big one. I see guys, you know you. I see guys going to the you know, bait shop lanes or whatever. They buy all these grass shrimp, ghost shrimp, but what's the person they're doing when they're out there sitting in the baits or sitting there smoking a cigarette? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that surgeon's not gonna like that new part, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah, but um, that's one of the things too. And I do, the other thing that we all see, is how many times have you seen people pull up to a spot, fish at 10 minutes and they don't get a bite for 10, 15 minutes and they have to leave? Oh yeah, you know, like, all the time. That, you know, You'll, you'll probably agree with me, but I'm a big believer. If you drop the anchor in this spot here, and you fish half hour, an hour, and you don't get a bite and you leave, that sturgeon that's coming up from wherever it's coming and smelling that scent, coming up to your, your bait, and now you're gone because you went somewhere else, you decided to go back to wherever, he's gonna come up here and now that bait's gone. It's gone, yeah. And guess what? I'm gonna be probably a little further ahead as it come to me and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get him. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, everyone's got their way of fishing for sure. Some guys are just a little more impatient than others, and that's definitely a, a species that you can't be impatient. You know, you definitely have to be able to sit there and, yeah. what do they call it, rot? You know, you rot all day. Rot right? and squat. Yeah, so. <laughs> the fish of a thousand hours. Yeah, it's, you know. I, especially in the South Bay, I mean, yes, we have our incoming spots and we have our outgoing spots, but, you know, I, throughout, throughout all my years of fishing back there, you kind of, like I said, you see the patterns, you know? Um, they're not always, you know, accurate, but yes, for the most part, you can pretty much sit and wait. And as long as you're fishing these areas, and I mean, they're really small lanes. You know, we've talked about this many a times, you know, it's like lanes on a, on a highway. You it's know? express I mean, lane. Yeah. Yeah, you don't gotta pay 250 to go 20 feet. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're definitely, uh, they're picky like that, you know, so they'll find their areas. And, and another thing we've talked about, you know, multiple times is, you know, my boat's 10 feet wide across the back, you know? And, uh, and I typically have six rods, six to eight rods, you know, spread out the back, uh, depending if I have, you know, the, that many people. Um, but we can, I mean, multiple times we'll, we'll have fish hit on the port side, for example, and that rod goes off mm -hmm. and that rod will go off again and it'll go off again. And I've literally moved over. I've told you plenty of times, 10, 15 feet, you know, I'm literally doing as wide as my boat. I don't want to go anymore because I know that that's the outside edge of it, you know, if that's where they're hitting. And we'll move over and then everything starts getting hit, you know, we start getting bit all over. Yeah. So, I mean, little changes like that, paying attention to stuff like that can really make or break your day for sure. Yeah. Um, and most people won't pay attention to that stuff. You know, they'll yeah. just be like, oh, fish on right there. Cool, fight it, you know, and it's good. And they start handing the rods off, you know. No, I want all these rods to get, you know, especially sturgeon fishermen. They're like, oh, if my rod doesn't get bit, I don't want it, right? Mm -hmm. They want to they hold their own rod. They want to do their own things, whatever it may be. But yeah, sometimes they can be a little picky. So you want to give everyone a fair chance, yeah. right? 
So yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy, but it, it does happen a lot. A lot. Yeah. That's why like I always say, like you probably heard me say it in some of the other videos. I kinda picture them like the cows you see in the in the in, you know, say you're driving to LA, Highway Five, you sure. see the cows. When they're yeah, they're crazy. feeding, they're kinda they're on the same line feeding on yeah. on grass or whatever, and when they're not, they're just traveling, they're still in a single line. Sure. You know, I think of them as they're cows, you know, they're, they're underwater cows pretty much, you know, when they want to feed, they want to feed, but they're in a consistent line. Yeah. You know, I, I've said it numerous times, you know, you go back and forth and you run your pattern and mark fish and you mark them in 10 feet of water and then you don't mark anything in 12, but you, you mark more in 15 and guess what, I'm stopping 15. Yeah. Because you know, there's a concentration of them there and um, I see a lot of people when we're, when we're fishing, you'll, you'll know this too, they come out there and they don't even, I don't even think they look at their screen and they just see us you know see other boats and they'll stop right in the same line yep a lot of times i'll mark fish in one spot doesn't mean that 10 or 20 feet behind me or you know in front of me has fish yeah i'm if i'm stopped somewhere it's because i mark something that's coming right at me not you know a long line of them you know mm -hmm. and i think a lot of guys have these nice nice fish finders and you know i'm running i think it's a little older but I see some guys with these new Simrads and all these fancy electronics. Use them, because you might find something that we don't know yet. And, um, and, and that's the thing. I mean, most people don't want to put that time in. Yeah. Know? So they kind of, and I'm not, I mean, it, it really doesn't bug me like that. I mean, it actually, you know, it tells me a lot. It shows me a lot of respect that that guy actually believes that I'm that good for them to be right there, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of, kind of, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, right? It's not crazy unless you're really really you know like you're saying on my anchor line or something yeah. like that you know then that's way too close um i think the only time i've ever got close to a boat it's like when he's out there and he's yeah. like anchor right here and yeah. we're, 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 we're like next to each other yeah yeah to the point where if he's cooking he can hand me a plate <laughs> yeah. you know? um and that's still, cool even that close I, I didn't get one that day <laughs> you know and then, i don't know you know um but yeah that's because i know him and we're like family but I don't ever get that close to anybody. Um, that's that's a common thing where we fish at. Um, but yeah, you know, just you guys try it out, try something different, you know. Um, especially when you come by at full speed. Yeah, that, that yeah. drives me nuts. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not fishing in forty feet of water. We're fishing in four to ten feet of water. Yeah. You know, so and it's crazy because like when we fish Martinez and stuff, people don't come that close to us. No. And it's a way bigger body of water in the, in the Delta. Yeah. And they go way around, and they you know they slow down here. I'm like, I don't know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't get it. But the other thing uh, that this guy has also kind of shown me over the years is rod selection. When I started fishing with you, what were the rods I was using? They're broomsticks. <laughs> or telephone poles, yeah. I'd say. But I, I just wanted to just beat them up, you know? And, yeah. And I always thought having a heavier rod, you know, would help me fight these things. And yeah, it helps to a certain point, because, you know, they fight more backbone. But over the years fishing with him, you know, he always tell me, oh, the broomstick, the broomstick. And I started using lighter and lighter and lighter. And then I think once we looked up with Cousins and I got that 80XL, that was super light. It's probably the lightest thing I owned then. Yeah. Um, and that rod tip is just super soft. You can see every little thing. You know, it's just my numbers jumped to the point where I just swapped everything out that I was using for, you know, once I started doing charters, to lighter and lighter and lighter. And today we're talking, and I told him I just got some new rods from Lakuma, and I said, oh, they work. They work great for halibut and everything the other day for trolling. But I said, I think I wanted it a little bit lighter. <laughs> he started laughing. I was like, what? Um, but yeah, you know, surprisingly, the lighter rods help you see that bite. But when you're fighting them too, I think you probably agree, you're fighting a big fish like that on a lighter rod, as long as that rod's bent, it still makes a lot, it, it takes a lot for that fish to <laughs> try to get away. Oh yeah. It's like a giant, like, like, like shock absorber. I it think is. it's just bent, it's just, it's like a giant bungee almost. It's constant pressure. You know, versus the, the heavier stiff rods, like, I think they have more of a chance of popping off. Of course. There's no bend, there's no give. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of guys that like troll in the rivers, like in the Delta for, for stripers, they put these four mono leaders and shock leader. That's, you know, if you it put is. straight braid, chances are you're gonna get hit and it's gonna pop right out, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I do see a lot of guys out there, you know, recently I ran into some guys and this guy had a 
nine foot terramar on a swim bait rod. Wow. Something I would fish for like a like yellowtail in Mexico. And uh, you could tell me, I can't, I can't, I can't feel a bite. I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't feel the water if you hit it with that rod. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, like the rod selection, what, what rods do you run? You know, like, um, so I'm running I'm, their cousin's rods also. Uh, but, still have some. Uh, yeah, I, I should I, not get rid of mine. I do, and I think they're the. You got the 808, 807 CPXs. Correct, the CPXs, um, and I love the rod. It's it's a very good all around rod. We use them for you know halibut. We yeah. use them for rockfish. You know, for I use them for tuna. Same thing. Yeah, you know, same rod. Um, tuna. Yeah, kind of tuna. The tuna, right? <laughs> but yeah, not the bluefin. Yeah. Uh, but. No, I mean, for me, it's, it's always been about lighter. You know, we've caught them on bass rods, like literally six and a half foot, yeah. you know, bass rods. You just gotta make sure you have a real, you know, Good strong reel. enough to handle the line capacity, first of all. Cause on a smaller rod, you're not gonna be able to really give it to them. So, you know, on a lighter rod, you're gonna, you're gonna lose a lot more line too. Your reel is your, your everything. That's reel is everything, absolutely. That's your transmission, your engine, your, you know. That's it. Without that's... the reel, you can't go forward or reverse, you know? And let me tell you, on those lighter rods, I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, there's nothing like it. You feel everything, you see everything. Yeah. And and that's the big thing. Like, why do we talk about such a soft tip? You know, I mean, like, what's your idea on that? Like, what's what do you what can you tell yeah, me like, on that? So the lighter rod for me, like over the years of you know fishing with this guy and just my own experiences too, is like other other anglers are out there. Oh, I didn't see a bite. Mm -hmm. and I started using lighter rods, and I'm seeing little little things. Just that the rod just tip. And honestly, I think the first time I, I hooked into one, you know, in the South Bay, you know, on my own, I thought I was getting, getting, I was using grass shrimp. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of grass shrimp from Kyle and you know me, I overdo it. I bought like a pound and a half of grass shrimp and he thought I was crazy. I was like, I said, well, at least if, I'm, if I don't catch anything, I'll take them home and put them in a cup of noodles. You know? Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I piled like 10, 15 of those damn things on there, you know, and you imagine a hook like this, how many damn grass shrimp, it, it, it looked like a, I don't know, it looked like some, yeah, you, can put, you can put 12 on there for sure. There's like a sniper's ghillie suit, you know, with yeah. leaves hanging out. But um, I kept noticing that rod was just barely just, just like that. I was like, what the hell's going on? I, I thought there was like a bullhead. We've caught bullheads yeah. back there. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to lay this damn thing out. And I was like, this bullhead's taking, it's taking my shrimp. I was like, or maybe a flounder or something. I was like, I'm going to just let him have it. And I swung on that thing and I couldn't pick that rod up past my horse. I was like, oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. oh yeah. I was, like, I was like, and then I started noticing, I was like, okay. The bigger fish, at least in saltwater. I know Martinez is different. Martinez, you got that typical pump. One, two, three, or up in the delta, wherever, wherever you're fishing, compared to the salt. I don't know what the saltwater does them, but they bite. The bigger ones bite lighter. Mm -hmm. And that soft tip lets you see everything. Oh, yeah. You know, there's times where the rod will just start, and you use balancers more than I do. Oh, yeah. The rod will just start. Oh, yeah, it goes. It and goes. they just kind of hang themselves on it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and. If you have a stiff rod like that, it's just, you know, I, I feel when, when the rod's really heavy and stiff, if they're lightly tapping on it and they feel that little resistance in the rod, they just, they let it go. Absolutely. They stop, I'm like, it's weird. Absolutely. Unless you have it that, that that rod in your hand and you react like in a split second, Instantly, you're yeah. not gonna help you. If they feel any little tug, anything, like we're talking about our, the actual length of leaders too, same thing. Some guys like shorter leaders. I like to make a longer leader to get it away from the actual sinker and slider, mm -hmm. so they don't feel it. Um, but yeah, absolutely, having that lighter rod helps. You know, I use, you know, I have a assortment of rods still. I got my, I got some Seekers on there, the 270s, um, all the Akumas now that I'm getting, the Monterey's, the uh, medium heavy Monterey's, PCH 761, the 801 medium heavy. I got, I got a bunch of rods. But the cool ones, I mean, you know, the last batch I got, the Monterey rods, I think those are pretty identical. And if you guys may or may not know, one of the guys, you may not know, one of the guys worked for Cousins that helped design some of those rods, mm -hmm. actually works for Akuma now. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the, if you see some of those Northwest rods that Cousins had, the ones for the river and stuff, yeah, and yeah, the, the carbon fiber rods handles, mm -hmm. those are in the Okuma SST rods now, you know? So um, oh, wow. a lot of that technology, you know, it's just, so now as I'm kind of going through, I'm like, ooh, this looks familiar. This looks familiar. Wow. You know? And um, I think, you know, throughout this year, and I'll keep, you know, like I told you today, I want the lighter ones now. I got the medium headers now. I want the mediums. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, try to get a good rod. I know there's a lot of rods out there. Um, that was a 12 to 25 pound. Mm -hmm. Between 12 to 25 pound rating or 15 to 25. Um, 
I like eight foot rods, you know, mm -hmm. the longer, a little longer rod, you can cast a little better <clears> with them. <throat> um, you have a little more leverage on the fish. Seven foot rods work too. They do, absolutely. You know, um, but I notice I can't get my bait out far enough like an eight foot rod. It's only a foot, I don't know why. So yeah. I can cast, you know, my name, I was a deadliest cast. Didn't come from just casting, casting. It's <laughs> fishing with this guy in, you know, doing swim baits and jigs and stuff and like all that kind of kind of led into that. And now I go to Mexico and you'll see me fire a little cold sniper, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards out. Oh yeah. And on a conventional reel, people are like, what the hell are you doing? And like, what? This is normal. Surface yeah, iron. I, I fire those things out. You know, and I, I would literally, it sounds bad. I lived in the other city years ago and me and Javi had a, had a few cold ones and we decided to go challenge ourselves in the middle of the street like at two in the morning. <laughs> we started firing surface irons down the street. Jesus. How he didn't hit a car, I don't know, but all you see is the sparks coming back from the, the jig in this, <laughs> this, 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 the, the street, just ding, 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 ding. Um, but yeah, just, you know, you get comfortable with it. Um, yeah, but that was pretty funny. Yeah, having, um, the, having the right rod. Having the right rod is, rod and reel is, very important. It you know, is. I use it helps. the Kuma Kavalas. I run 65 pound braid on them. Mm -hmm. I like a higher vis line, you know, white or something bright because you have multiple lines like we do. One guy hooks up and you have all all dark green lines. It's hard to see when you got to go over and under. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I switch them up. I have some that are white, some that are blue, some that are neon. Um, but 65 pound braid seems to be the main thing for me. I don't know, what do you have in yours? 65. Yeah. Yeah, I run that on all of it. I mean, I can use 65 for everything throughout the entire season, so. Yeah. It, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all around the, yeah, perfect. So How about reels, what reels? Are... I'm still running the Abbots. Which one? Uh, the SX. SX, yeah. Yeah, and it's I run, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well I run the SXJ, which is yeah. even smaller, and I do those for salmon. So I just I'm not a big fan of big stuff. Yeah, I don't like it, you know. I had I have one that I was running for a bit after they, they took all the rods and rows from the boat. I had a Kavala twelve. I know it'll work, but it's just way too big. I was like, that's something I could fish like, yeah. like yo yo fishing for yellowtail. But I got some new new reels recently from Akuma, so we swapped that out. Yeah, um, no, definitely times have changed. I mean we don't you don't need to have, you know, the big, you know, Penn Senator reels and you know, that's, that's, you see a lot of the old timers when they come on the boat, they bring their own stuff and they're, they're huge. It sounds know? like the clickers on the reel. Really yeah, 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 exactly. And then, yeah. and then they end up like, you know, I have a customer who he likes to bring his own stuff. And, you know, usually I'd say before even noon, you know, if we're fishing the Farallons, I mean, he's like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. I need one of yours, you know? Those things are like two to one, you know? Yeah, it sucks. You know, you run an Avid, it's, you know, five, three or whatever it is. Um, you know, six to one, whatnot, and and I also run the uh, the Lexus also. Yeah, Lexus I think is an all around. I think about that too. Is a, a lot of guys. You you you've told me this. A lot of people that we take out in that moment when you're fighting and fish, you don't think about guiding that line back and forth. No, mm -mm. I do. It's, it's it's second habit. I can do that thing really quick. Yeah, you know? yeah. You don't even think but about it. It's just it's. Coming. I do that when I throw irons for for, for yellows and mm -hmm. stuff, and that's a fast speed I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. The newer low profile bait casters have gotten a lot better. Oh, yeah. I know when we started messing with them, we'd, we'd run through Alexa what, oh, <laughs> a we... couple trips. Oh, yeah. They're just... messed up, but they're getting better. They are. I you know. Um, the Komodos and Okuma, I love those things. You know, I took them down to Mexico for my birthday last year, and dude, I pretty much had the drags at the FU all day. And, yeah. And it's, it's still going. Uh, the 463 Komodos, the, the power handle ones. Um, those are good. And you, you run Lexus. Mm -hmm. I um, love the Lexus. I, yeah. I, I run those, and it's you know although you have to change bearings, you know we, when, we, when you fish as much as we do, yeah, you, which isn't as own. much as you know some of the other guys, but yeah, if you fish as fish fish as much as we do, then yeah, you're gonna have to replace a lot of stuff, right? You're gonna change bearings, and bearings is number one on the Abbots and on the Lexus. I'm constantly changing bearings, um, and, and I mean I wash them like as if I'm washing my truck. I mean I really pay attention to what I'm doing, you know. Um, making sure to flush them but i think sometimes it's almost like too much water is a bad thing too so this know? is the other thing too that that i was i was telling you about i notice guys when they go fishing and scent's a big thing for sturgeon mm -hmm. i see guys spraying you know salt away mm -hmm. you know whatever soap all over the boat and all yeah. over I'm a, I'm a big believer that that stuff gets on your braid braid absorbs all that of course now when you have you know boat wash or whatever it is on their braid, it's gonna soak it up for a bit. I, I have a feeling like 
if it's soaked you know in your spool deep enough it's gonna be in your braid of course um so i i, I generally just hit them with water i get a microfiber towel kind of dry them down and then i get all right well after another excellent gopro battery that just went out <laughs> we had to put in the battery um anyhow but uh where I mean, were we? <laughs> I don't know, but we're, we'll start off with something totally different. Um, I wanted him to show you guys how he wraps up his whole herring. So he went and he dug through the the bottoms of his the bait freezer bait collection, and that's it's, a pretty hefty herring there. You mean to tell me that them those fish eat that whole thing like they that? They do with that little hook. They do with this little hook, and I'll no, show no, you. No. I'll show you. You convinced me to use lighter rods, but I don't know about smaller hooks. <laughs> So yeah, they, eat these, all, they eat these all day long, right? I mean, this is exactly what's out there yeah, yeah. Uh, when they're spawning and stuff. Uh, so it's pretty simple. I mean, what I like to do is, which this is frozen, so I can't necessarily put the hook through, but I'll put the hook through the head and I'll have the hook come out completely exposed like so, okay? I'll push it straight through. So the hook is actually just laying there. It's completely open and there's a reason for that. With any fish, when they eat another fish, they never really eat from the tail up, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason, because the fish flare up, and fins. their fins come up, and they can't really get that down. So they may attack it this way, but they're gonna turn it, they're gonna spin it around, and they're gonna eat head first, and everything will lay flat. A little from the side. I can run too. my fingers like this over the top, and it won't, but if I go this way, I'll stab myself, right? Yeah. Um, same concept, right? Yeah. All right, so, like I was saying, hook goes through the head, comes out, and you want it to look like so, okay? And then I'll take it and I'll make a half hitch. I'll go all the way down, which of course is gonna fight me, right? With that little fin. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get the half hitch, do it again. And you can do this, you know, as long as your leader will, will allow you to, right? Which is why I usually run like a four, four and a half foot leader, five feet, when it comes to doing the half hitch because you use a lot of material so you come again come again come again like i said you do it over and over and over until you're all the way up to the tail which in this case we're just going to go ahead and stop here right and if the hook was through where it's supposed to to the head because i said it's frozen i can't do it um what you're going to get is this little pattern right which goes all the way up and the theory behind the half hitch is or the reason for it is that when the fish you know when you set the hook and that fish takes it all this unravels okay so it's not going to make a knot so if you look when i pull it unravels right mm -hmm. so when this section pulls it unravels there's no knot okay so obviously you're going to pull real hard right on your yeah, rod end the hook. and that's one thing i always say I tell people all the time, you know, set the hook hard. You picture the guys on ESPN, the Bassmaster guys, when they swing on those little little ditch pickles, those, those green carp. Yeah. They swing like they're sturgeon fishing. And like, you guys, it's all ass backwards. And actually to make it work better, I'm just gonna go ahead and stab it, right? Just pierce it, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight through just to give you guys a, a better idea. Like I said, that that's what you want your hook to look like. Okay, kind of funny, right? I mean, yeah, it's just hanging there. And then you have hitch. So one, in this case, like I said, we'll just go just a few. And then of course, always at the end of the tail. And now that, now that the hook's actually in place, yeah. you guys can see what that looks like. The first thing they're gonna, they're gonna go out, they're gonna encounter is a hook. First thing, right? So that, that way you can kind of, I mean, when they take it, they're not necessarily thinking, mm, what is that? You know, they're eating a fish. Uh, so they're gonna feel a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole hook's actually exposed. You know, like whole thing. I've done whole herring, and um, and what do you call it? I I just done them different. I done them from the top too, and the hook's usually hanging up up top. Mm -hmm. I've also done if it's a smaller herring, I've done to the side where the hook's hanging to the side. But the whole, not all the hooks hanging out. Correct. So that fish literally has to really, really take it, and me set the hook on it. I mean, to bust through that herring exactly. and, and hook it. Exactly. This one, it's just like, it's, it's already there, you know? Yeah, any There's, little bit of that of that sturgeon's lip, you know, hits it or any any part of its mouth, I mean, the hook's there, right? And yes, I know what you mean about having the hook basically just come out yeah. you know, right across the top of the head and be yeah. fixed like so. Um, but yeah, I've always done it like this. 
And like I said, you can yeah, see the- That'll work for a bunch of other things out here. You guys oh, yeah. fishing and stuff like that. You know, oh, yeah. Um, and the half hitch is cool. Cause like I said, it comes, you know, when you pull, it just, it all, I mean, look, it's, it looks like a knot and it's not, you know, you're basically pulling and there, there it goes. So when it comes time to change baits and stuff, it's super simple. It doesn't take long at all. I mean, you're done. So yeah, it smells great. Yeah. Fantastic. That's cool. No, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Are you done with the, the herring? Yeah. Cause this is, put this leader aside. I'm going to put it, where do you want to put this thing at? That guy's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember her. So I do it a little different. Yeah. That's the, the, the captain's corner talk, you know? He always tells me to just let it out and be me. I, I, I say a bunch of funny shit, so uh, you guys will get used to it over time. If you fish with me, you know. There's not a... How many times have you been in the boat when we're, when we're out laughing? He's already laughing. Look oh at him. Oh gosh, yeah. I say yeah. a bunch of stuff that just... Yeah. Really no, I told him, I think you guys would really enjoy the, the real him. I mean, he's, he's trying to be... You know, trying to keep things PG and trying to make sure that, you know, he, he covers every audience, you know, every every member. Uh, but no, just be yourself and yeah, I'm little by little been doing it, you know. Yeah, you're good. I have to let my filter off a little bit sometimes. Yeah, you, know, just, you guys yeah. will like that. People like the real, you know. Yeah. So, you know, when I do my herring, which I learned from those two brothers that we all know, the Kunang brothers. And by the way, I have their book. I've never read it. When I talked to them last time, I still haven't time, read it. Huh? I, I looked. I glanced through it. Okay. But then I'm like. I was talking to I was talking to Doug the other day, and he said he's read it. And I said I've never read a page out of that damn book. I just read the title. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I talked to to the brothers, and I asked him. I was like, I need a copy, and he said, for what? Yeah. So I, don't know, I just want to have just personal reference. Maybe it's something I'm missing there. He goes, he goes, no, I don't think you missed anything. I, I think you know you're at the point where you can make your own. And I was like, nah, hell no. But I'm sure it's something I'm gonna that I haven't seen yet. Um, it's. For for me, it's not what I haven't seen. It's just you know, it's it's kind of cool to look back at how things were done yeah. back then. And because um, although we're using hooks and lines and weights, I mean, it's it's different. Yeah. Right back then, where you were allowed to use two hooks. Yeah. You three know, with, with barbs. We're allowed three. to use three. Okay. And I used to fish up, up in Martinez with, with Flash and with Steve. I had those uh, leaders of hippos and making from hunters. That's right. Like, that's right. The, they call them death death leaders or something like that. Yeah, sturgeon death rigs, and he made them called a triple hippo. It was three hooks. Those three, those those uh, octopus hooks from that's the right. owners. Yep. And that thing, that big yeah. one, I, that big one I caught by the bridge, that sixty-five and three-quarter inch one. Back when we were allowed to keep them that big, that had all three hooks: one in the mouth, one on the side of the face, one on the top of the head. And for it to pierce that head, it was, it was just, yeah, that fish was never gonna get away. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. You know, and I had, I remember, I remember Steve laughed at me because I had, I had one hook had a ghost shrimp. The other one had. It was, it was ghost shrimp and pile worm on one hook. The other one had grass shrimp. And then the other one had eel. Yeah, a little bit. I had egg. everything. Yeah. And you know me, I, I just I go all out. But um but that that fish wasn't getting away at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah, that was funny. So what I do is what I learned from the command brothers when I was a kid. You know. What I seen them kinda do is I'll get a knife and I like to do some cut just a little sharp knife being frozen. Yeah. I cut it just like that. Why do I cut it like that? Because we all know these things are pretty much blind in the water. They don't see anything, but when this thing's hooked up the way I hook it up, and I'll show you why, I just get my, my hook and just put it right through, almost where the spine's at, right through there. You can feel, I'm like pushing through the spine mm -hmm. and it grabs on a little easier. I just turn it once it's going through and see the hook. And I put it right back through that same lateral line where that spine's at. Try not to pierce my finger. I'm sure I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> now I just feed it right back through. And like we were talking about earlier. Now look at that. Okay. Yep, okay. that looks excellent. Now when that's in the current, and it's in, you know, on the bottom, this thing's twirling. It's just sitting twirling. And maybe they feel it's something alive. Sure. You know, they come up and just grab it. And I can't tell how many times they just take it. I do the same thing with, with the middle pieces. You know, I just keep that same kind of cut, you know? Um, almost like, like the plug cuts they use for salmon, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, and so on. And, you know, you have multiple pieces there. Like, look that's at a big, that. That's a big male. 
Yeah, look at that, multiple pieces. You know what I mean? And then uh, same thing like he did with the head. I put it through here and I use the head, you know, and we catch fish like that too. But what I do afterwards, I get this this hot mess here, they call Miracle Thread, you know? And um, yeah, I don't know, this is, someone's trying to knit a sweater there. And this is where I get all crazy with my thread and just wrap around it a couple times, just because we know there's little critters out there that want to take stuff off. But I'm putting my thread on the actual, what's that called? Not the shank, the backside of the hook, whatever. Yeah. And, and I go back over it, you know? You know, you can do it a bunch of times. You can add, if you really wanted to, add a go shrimp on the back. Sure. You know, do a little combo. Anything. You know, um, and then make a little kind of knot, run it through. I'm getting all over all right, this. Now, look at that bait. That's, if you've ever seen a big sturgeon or any sturgeon, their mouths aren't that big. But that's just big enough to get that damn thing down their mouth. You know, and that, as you would say, looks sexy. That, that's sexy. That's yeah. that's sexy, you know. And the hook, I like that. I like the way the hook's like that, because that's exactly yeah, the same way. As soon as you, you pull on this thing, like you said, mm -hmm. this hook's gonna come right out and yeah. just bury them. Well, one of the older videos that I did, um, right at, at Hobby, Hobby was like, you know, like my deckhand, thank you. Um, mm. He's like family to me, but he came out and same thing. I hooked a pretty big one. That's a year that I tagged out, what, in like, Four or five days. Yeah. I told us I'm done for the year. I burned through all three tags. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that last one was, I, ha I always happened to get them right in that same range at 59 and three quarters, like right, just right before I got a throw back. And kind of the same thing. Um, same little thing, you know? And the other thing I was going to mention too is I know we all keep our baits cold, but herring like this, tray baits. I like to keep them in a cooler. I buy dry ice. Okay. Keep them frozen solid because if you use ice, the other ones are gonna thaw out. Mm -hmm. Bring the tray out that you need, and whatever you don't use, it's still frozen. You can use it again because yeah. once that that seal goes out, because it thaws out, it's done. You know, but um, but yeah. And herring are pretty tough. I mean, they herring are. But and what happens when you, when you 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 know freeze them, you know thaw them out, refreeze them, uh -huh. they go to, they go to crap. They're trash. You know, you might as well just just donate and save for crab bait or something like that. But yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, that pretty much says it all right there. But I don't know what else we haven't touched on. Two know. two different ways and super different effective. Ways, yeah, you know? and I think the, the background will work perfect too with this. You know? mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no no yeah. That makes me wrap. And over. let me tell you that the the reason why I use Dacron and it's kind of funny. I just think of I kind of think of myself if I'm eating um, and I feel something in my food. Im immediately yeah, I'm like spit, what spit is that out, yeah. you know so I started using Dacron years and years and years ago with that same you know thought in mind where it's so soft <laughs> yeah that's yeah it's so soft There's that it, <laughs> they do it let's see what's going on um no it's just so soft that they really they, they really shouldn't be able to really feel it yeah. you know and then the other I thing I like about it too is that you know if you take for example this and I lay this flat, I mean, you guys probably from where you're at there, you probably can't even see it, you know? But if you take this, for example, and this this works exactly the same, but look at the difference in how that lays, mm -hmm. right? So you got something that lays perfectly flat, right? And it's not all crazy in the currents and stuff. And then you have something like this. Like I say, everyone uses this, but these are my reasons. These are, this is, this is my reason why, right? Or my reasons why I like to use this. Um, the other thing too is like what we were talking about earlier with scent and this is something a lot of people don't know and I'm going to share this with everyone but I will take my leaders and I'll and I'll dunk them in I'll dunk them in whatever you know liquid or fluid or whatever whatever it is that we're using um, whether it be eel or whether it be herring or whatnot the blood I'll take my leaders and I'll dunk mm -hmm. them in it you know yeah, yeah. why because it'll absorb it yeah. so you have extra scent you know, there's more scent in the I've water. actually, I'll, I'll tell you guys a secret too, that I don't know if he knows, but I've done it, especially when the bite's tough, and it's gonna sound funny as hell. Yeah. I got this idea from a movie, but uh, you know, I have a bunch of procure. So I decided, how can I get some scent on my bait without messing with the bait? So I went to the public bathroom at a movie theater, and they had a machine that dispenses tampons. So I pulled the tampon out, cut go. a piece off, and wrapped it with thread, and I soaked it in Procure Predator, and yeah, it's like a sponge. So the guys laughed at me, but I, I hooked up like two or three fish that day. Yeah, and it's just just sent, and then when you're done, bring it out and just get another squeeze of that, and, 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 and you know, 
Predator or whatever, you know, Santrum scent. And, yeah, it's, it's just got sponge, but it, it, it absorbs it better than, I, I've, I've tried sponges. I've tried like the little yellow sponges used for dishes and mm -hmm. it just bleeds right through. This one, oh, yeah. you know, absorbs best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a couple of lures that we use for salmon that have little pieces of sponge or yeah. that you put your scent in. Yeah, you have the flashers now from, was it Max, that has a little scent chamber, a little yeah. round pad in there. Yeah. And load it with scent and yeah, but that's, I've done that before. I don't, you know, I don't, nobody ever has ever tried that. Um, yeah, that scents everything, you know. But um, if you can get your hands on some local herring when it's spawning, yeah, that's that's hot. It's a hot bait, and it's it's a uh, it's good for just about anything. Mm -hmm. Anything we fish for, whether it's halibut, you can catch salmon on it. If you don't catch fish, you can take it home and eat it. You can eat it exactly. Yeah, I, I I won't. <laughs> but you I can eat it. I have a thing with bait. He's tried. He said it's good. Yeah, yeah. I've done grass shrimp too. I've cooked grass shrimp on the boat. Oh the lighter. My God. <laughs> I mean, it's just the shrimp, right? It's, that's all it is. We gotta try ghost shrimp one day. No, I won't. I won't do that. I saw a video. Actually, we do have some ghost shrimp too, huh? We do. How are we they? do. They're, they're probably frozen solid still, but we can, so? we can try. Let's see. Let's see. So I got you three that I thought of. Nice. Right? Three, that's it. Well, I know it's not enough to cover your head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how I do this. And um, so I just put the hook right through their, their head pretty much. It feels different now that they're not trying to bite me. So I just go right through their, I guess, mouth. Just pierce right through. Okay. I'm trying not to break them, but I don't know if they're frozen and thought out, they're not the same. But I try to run it all the way down the same shape of the body. And this is great because it's two different perspectives, right? I mean, yeah. we both catch fish. We, you know, we both have been okay, doing it for a see? long time. And depending on the size, you know, I, I tend to tell wherever I get the bait from, I want bigger ones and, you know, some people take care of me. I go pump my own, I get really big ones. And I'll get my thread. And just start. I wrap the claw. I don't take the claws off. I leave the claws on. So I use the claws as a like something. A little like, anchor point. Yeah. Yeah, anchor point to tie it on. And just like that, I just keep going. And then I go back over it again. And work my way around. And then so on. I use a. You've seen a bunch of. I'll put another one on here and wrap and wrap and wrap. And my my theory on that is I'm not going to put them all on here in case you want to wrap them on yours. Yeah. Um, is that sturgeon's coming around looking for something. Let's pretend this is a hole where there's bait. You know, these things live in little holes. Mm -hmm. And that thing comes up and smells it. It's gonna suck it up. Now, versus finding one, versus finding four or five, is when, when I pump, I pump a hole and I'll pull four or five up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was a big sturgeon, I'd wanna eat four or five instead of just that one. If I'm gonna put all that effort and energy to eating something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the simpler <laughs> buffet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the single one will work too, but I I always feel like four, five, six, maybe seven ghost shrimp will make them bite more. And a lot of times I don't, you know, when I check the baits, you know, when I put them on, they're nice and orange and whatnot. Some guys take them off, put fresh ones on. I don't, I leave them on and pack up, I'll put another one on. Yep, love them creating up. that the big old pile. If you look at the guys up with you went up to Oregon, it's not like their fish in the Columbia, right? I've never, no, done, or, I've never done it. Um, I know, I know Darius, he mentioned, but they use like the whole American Shad. Whole thing. That's a big ass bait. Oh, yeah, three you know, pounders, two pounders, like, three pounders. So I'm like, why not put, you know, a dozen go shrimp in the hook? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Don't do that. Maybe five or six, you're good. You know, let's see how, how he does his. So I'm completely backwards, right? Which is why I said this is good. We're looking at, you know, two different, two different perspectives, right? And we're both catching fish. I believe more on trying to keep this thing alive because this does create some 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 type of you know I'm injured I'm hurt okay come that's why I put right? six so yeah so nah, he, help me so he goes head first I don't I go tail first I always go tail first um, and I try to either come out before the head so it stays alive like so okay so it's before the head all you're doing is going through like somebody were to pierce my finger or yeah something, right um, underneath your skin yeah just just. It's not gonna, it's not gonna kill him right away, if anything. Um, or depending, if he's not, you know, too crazy alive or whatever, I'll just go right through the head, and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, typically I'm right before the head, and as you can see, my hook is so small that that, that's enough, right? That's and this is a small, small bait. Uh, and then of course I'll wrap it with the magic thread like he did with his. Um, 
but just two different two different examples of you know we're, yeah. we're both fishing we're both fishing for the same type of fish and we're both successful so you yeah. can it, there there is no right or wrong way to do this or you know there is no right or wrong way to fish for these things for the most part yeah uh yes it's you're able to catch them on multiple different baits uh you don't have to use these dacron leaders you don't have to use that you can use steel leaders like guys you should back in the day you should yeah so i have a, i have a thing with, with, with the steel that i don't you know i don't lie. i used to use them when i fished the piers back in the day we all do. but now with these braids and stuff like that when you fish the piers and you hook one on steel and if you decide to run for the pines which they always do and the steel wires kind of kink mm -hmm. and that fish rolls guess what Tip out of your line. That's why I like That's this. Why I using it. This, you know, this and that was probably the same thing. And this can take a beating. He felt it, and this thing's all. It feels, you know, the abrasion all over it. But mm -hmm. like he said, it'll last me another four or five fish. Oh, easy. Yeah. Um, some lines, like when I catch a fish personally, as soon as I catch a sturgeon the keeper, I take that leader off and I retire it. I have a whole collection of them hanging on the wall, and I do a lot. But that's just my personal thing. But when I make these, you know, he knows. I, my hands are beat up, arthritis, who knows, carpal tunnel. But these things are meant to last quite some time. And if, you know, you hook into a couple, get a little file and sharpen them down. But, yeah. you know, they they go a long way. Um, but yeah, that, that was my thing with the steel. You know, I just, I don't, I think I have a way of thinking, you need a steel leader, you need to fish something that has teeth. Wahoo. Yeah, no, no. Time I've ever for sure. And I've even caught Wahoo without using steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy, but. No, for sure. You know, and um, that's, that's why I take, I run Dacron on everything, even my downriggers too. Mm -hmm. You know, as we all know, downriggers come with steel lead, with steel yeah. wire, right? With yeah. steel line. Um, but I've lost way too many weights because of that. You get a little kink in that yeah. line. You got a 10 pound, 12 pound ball hanging off of that. Yeah, you're like, like the time that we ran into those crab pots. Or that. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. downrigger. Oh, that's God. Like, that's yeah, that happened like twice, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, we, don't, we don't like to remember yeah. those days, though. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So the, the the steel leader, yeah, it's not it's not great. Yeah. Um, can you use it? Yes, you can. You, there's 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 multiple things you can do. Um, Walk them. They're different, you know, from what we're doing here, right? It's not just one way and only way, but yeah, there's there's plenty of different ways to do things, and these are just a few examples. Yeah. But. I don't know. I think we covered quite a bit, and we're definitely gonna have to do another video on salmon because this guy—I don't lie. I don't do salmon too much. I know how to do it. I caught him before when I worked on Flash. Yeah, I, I caught quite a few salmon on that boat. But so it's like something you don't practice a lot. You just kind of lose it. And I haven't caught a salmon in like four and a half, five years. Partially because my boat's been down, and I haven't had a chance to go out. I think last time I went out, I handed my rod off to somebody, and I was with, uh, with Ross. Okay. That was the last time that I hooked him. Maybe I should have just not handed my rod off. <laughs> so, anyhow, but um, we'll do some more videos and we're gonna start the whole podcast thing too. And this guy will be on here with me a lot too. Um, it was a little cold today. We wanted to do it on the boat, but I'm wearing shorts as usual, as you can tell. Shorts, short sleep. Yeah. It's like freezing ass cold. It is cold today. But we'll do more videos and uh, yeah, I wanted to share one more thing with you guys. This is something I have on the boat. I have a big container of these things on the boat. They're from Clean Freak. Um, not a sponsor of mine, but I just, I discovered them. And this is, a, this is actually a coconut scent one. But the the unscented one is what I use when I'm going in between handling baits. Because even the scented ones, you know, they're antibacterial, whatever. They smell good. Uh -huh. and even if you're done fishing for the day, like when I have sunblock and salt all over my damn face, I get one of those, wipe my face down and it helps get rid of that funk. Or in between handling baits and going to eat your lunch or whatever, you don't want to smell this, this shit stinks. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's, oh, it's horrible. Um, but, go ahead and open that thing up. You yeah. open it up and, you know. And they come in citrus, coconut, lavender, tea tree. Yeah, it says one large body wipe. Yeah, <laughs> you can literally like fish for days and you know, look at that thing. Wow. Like, we can, let's cut that thing in half, let's see how. Let's see what we can. Yeah, it smells good. We can, this, this is a coconut one, you know. This is a, to you, for all you island boys, you know. <laughs> island boys in San Francisco Bay. Get a little coconut. There it is. Yeah, it's not. Try to wipe that funk off. Yeah. You know. See what it does. Especially if you're out there all day and hot, sweaty, and 
you know, you have a hot date afterwards, just wipe yourself down with some coconut, whatever. It's, it's big enough for the whole body too. Yeah. And they come in a big dispenser too. Oh, really? I think you one. Um, it's like a big roll and man. That's crazy. Especially, yeah. Right? That's crazy. Kind of health, yeah. you know? Oh, it does, big time. Um, especially like one of my, I guess you can call it a pet peeve. As we all know, we bring sandwiches and stuff in the boat and chips and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a big old bag of chips and, you know, I tell people, go ahead, help yourself. Sure. But you get, you know, the one guy that decides to go take a piss off the boat and, and then he comes in and reaches in your bag of chips. I'm like, yeah, yeah you can have that. I don't, <laughs> yeah, no. So I'll make sure that here, have a wipe, clean your hands. Yeah. You know. No, these are great. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, literally, I don't smell anything. Yeah, it's gone, dude. Or, you know, you know yeah. shrimp or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't even smell this no more. I smell this. Yeah. You know, but we'll oh. put a link for this. These are on Tackle Swap, you know. I said it's not a sponsor of mine and anything like that, but, but uh, yeah, they're pretty good, man. You know, they're on the boat as long as we are. Yeah. Like, when I go on my next long range trip, I'm going to bring a whole gang of these. Yeah. You know, being a bigger dude, those showers are like, they're meant for like, for elves. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope this helps you guys. I'd like to say thank you to Paul for absolutely for, for joining me on this first one. And I don't know, I'm gonna try to do it. And it's hard, it's hard for me to edit and record videos all the time. I've been talking about this for weeks. Well, it's hard for us to get together too. <laughs> yeah, we very have different busy. schedules and stuff and very, I'm, very I'm fishing busy. more now, but I wanna try to do these kind of, these podcasts, I'm gonna call it the Captain's Corner, I think. Yeah, perfect. You know, we'll get him on here a lot and a few other captains and just go over a bunch of different subjects and you guys have any questions or anything you want to hear from us, you know, we've been in this a long time. Go ahead and let us know, put it in the comments, you know, message me on Instagram or whatever, and he's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you guys should definitely go check out his charter too. He, he, he kills a lot of fish, you know. Um, yeah, he does trips to the fair lines with swim baits, that's fun. Yeah. You know. Uh, Everywhere, in the bay, the yeah, that's when you hear us, uh, hook up! <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fun. So I'll put all his info in there for you guys. You guys check it out. And uh, of course mine, you guys know me. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll see you guys <laughs> later. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Hit the follow button, the damn bell, break the bell, I don't know. All of that. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, we'll see you guys in the water right now. Until next time. Yeah. We're out of here. Later.